Climate Connection. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Kyle Sunderland, and we are on our third and final week of the study of the first epistle of John. So far this week, you have heard from Danny and Amy, and then to wrap the week off, you will have Brittany and Jimmy. If you have not um, watched all the episodes in this series, I would encourage you to go back to our YouTube channel and get caught up on any days you have missed. Or if you are jumping on to this uh, Devo today for the very first time, I would definitely encourage you to go back from the beginning and um, start there. There's been a lot of content shared. Uh, they've, everyone's done a really nice job so far. So if you have watched uh, my Devos in the past, you know I'm usually outside. I like to be outside. I'm usually in my backyard somewhere. Well, today you can see it's not my backyard. But it is a beautiful backdrop, isn't it? No, me and my wife, were on vacation in Sydney. And as much as I would love to say it's Sydney, Australia, down under, that's not the case. It is Sydney, Nebraska, it's where my dad lives. Spending a couple days up here. And this little pond that you see is just at the local park there. It's beautiful, and I couldn't pass up the opportunity to uh, do a Devo here. So I do apologize if... Um, some dogs or some geese are making noise, some people walk by, or the wind, because it is fairly windy today. Um, hopefully that doesn't interfere too much. So we shall see how it goes. Uh, what I do like to do to start off every Devo, and when I do my own personal Devos at home, I would like to try to find a quiet place, or quiet as, much po quiet as much as possible, and that's where this gazebo comes in handy today. But if you are not in your quiet place, um, if there's a lot of noise in the background and you can't really focus, I would encourage you to stop the video right now and get to one of those places and restart. It just gives you, a, gives you the opportunity to be with just you and God and really immerse yourself in the devotion. So I also like to start every devotion off with a prayer. So if you would, please pray with me. Father God, I just want to say thank you for the love that you have shown us. Thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus had paid for us for our sins. I cannot fathom or imagine how difficult that would be to sacrifice your son, let alone the burden and the weight that Jesus carried to that cross. But I thank you for that. I thank you that because of that, we have our salvation. We have our internal salvation. And I want to say thank you for that. And I love you for that. Father, as we dive into our devotion in First John today, I ask that you are present here with us. Open our eyes, our minds, and our hearts so that we can immerse ourselves completely in you and get what it is out of these verses that you feel we need to learn. Um, we may have read these verses a hundred times before, or this might be the first time. I ask that you give us new eyes to dig deeper, Father. In your son's mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, so we are going to be in 1 John, and we're going to read verses 1 through 5 today. And it talks about overcoming the world. And I, I love that comment, overcoming. To be an overcomer means that you have to have been burdened with something. There has to be a struggle that you've gone through and you've came out of and you've come out even stronger. So that word overcomer, I absolutely love it. One thing I want to point out here in 1 John 5 is that the author John so far, he's spoken of love and obedience quite a bit, but not so much in faith. So the emphasis now, it shifts from love and obedience to talking about believing in the sun. A quick little side note for you. Of First John's 10 references to believing, seven of them are in chapter 5 alone. So chapter 5 is heavily laden with faith. And I think that's awesome. It just goes into that topic of overcoming. Our faith overcomes. 
I know you've seen the faith over fear shirts or taglines and stuff like that. Well, we can overcome the world. Faith overcomes fear. <clears throat> so faith keeps the commandments of God. And you're going to hear about that as we read these verses. But I want you to know that, that the road to love such a great concern of John's is paved with faith in Christ. So we've talked about love and obedience the last couple weeks. But it is through faith that we have that love and obedience. So let us dive right on in. So 5.1 says, Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? All I can say is, wow, those verses right there, they're so encouraging. Like I said, to be an overcomer means you had to have been faced with something that is a struggle, something that has tried to tear you down, break you apart, and you have come out stronger and better because of it. We are all overcomers. As Christians, we are of all overcomers. <clears throat> so, in verse 2, it talked about obeying his commandments. In scripture, the way the way to love the children of God is because of God's commandments. Show believers the true way to do good for others. So the Ten Commandments are considered the law. And we are also told to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, correct? Correct. But we're also told to obey the law, correct? You know that's true. You can say correct. So you can sum it up by saying the love and law, they complement each other. They work hand in hand. God gave us the Ten Commandments because he loves us. We follow the Ten Commandments because we love God. And we love our neighbor as ourselves because we are told to. That we are supposed to treat others the way we want to be treated. You know, that golden rule. So the love and law complement each other perfectly. Kind of like peanut butter and jelly, salt and pepper... I'm sure there's some other obscure ones, but we'll just do the common ones. Bread and butter? Yeah. Okay. So, verse 3 says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. Burdensome means heavy, right? Well, according to this, it's not. Following... His commandments, following his law, it's not heavy, it's not hard, it's relatively easy. And I do want to cross-reference something here about that. If you turn to Matthew 11, 28 through 30, give me a second here and I'll get it up. So yeah, Matthew 11, 28 says, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Matthew says it pretty well right there, if you ask me. To accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, it is a heavy decision. And when I mean heavy, it means it... It carries a lot of weight. It is a life-changing, life-altering decision. It is the biggest and greatest decision you will ever make in your life, whether to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
I know if you're married, when you propose to your spouse, that's a big decision. And if they say yes, hopefully, that's a big decision. But ultimately, your choice, your decision for your salvation, that is the heaviest decision you will have in your life. Whether to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior or not. But right here in Matthew, it says that, and it's Jesus talking, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus takes away that heaviness. There is a weight that is lifted when you become a Christian. Now, I don't want you to think that when you become a Christian that it's easy and stress-free. No. I will go to say even as far as it is difficult. Scripture does not tell us that being a Christian is going to put you on the path of easy street. No, we're going to be persecuted. And there will be stress, there will be trials, tribulations. But we can overcome. There's that word again, overcome. And these five verses that we read through, it talks about that, being an overcomer through our faith in Jesus Christ. God gives us opportunities daily to go right from wrong. We do fall short. We do make mistakes. We do. And it, it's not always fun. But through our faith and our salvation as Christians, we have the ability, ability to overcome those. When you go through your day-to-day -day activities, when you really feel that Satan's attacking or you're feeling the weight of the world is on your shoulders, take rest in knowing that we have God and Jesus in our corner, that Jesus paid that sacrifice for us that we can overcome. That no matter how many punches are thrown at us, that we can get back up and we can overcome. It's awesome. It's freeing. Genuine Christians are not defeated by the world's hostility or compelled by it, but in fact, we turn to Christ. So you can go to your news feed if you're on social media, which most of you are. If you're watching this, you're on social media in one form or another. If you turn on your news feed, you're going to see story after story of hatred and persecution and violence and so much negativity but as a Christian we can't let that defeat us we can't look at these negative news feeds and be down on ourselves no we need to use those as moments to rise up we need to share the love of Christ Share that hope and love that we have. Share it with the world. Don't let negativity bring you down. I know people that know me, they say I'm a very positive person, an uplifting person. And it's true. But there are, there are times in my life where I have definitely felt that weight of the world come crashing on my shoulders. And it always seems that when things are going really well in life, I'm on fire for Jesus. I'm doing everything I possibly can for the Lord. And it, it feels great. But always, it never seems to fail, but that's when I feel like I'm attacked. Something happens in my life that feels like it's going to just shatter it to pieces. But I have faith in Jesus Christ. I know that He has got my back. And... I have the ability to get up off the ground and rise up because of that. Sometimes you go through that mud, um, you're going through the trenches, and it might take some time, but ultimately I know that God, he's got our back. He's got my back, he's got your back. So I want you, to get, I want you all to know that. There's a verse, well, there's a section in the Bible I really want to cross-reference right here, and it's in Romans, and it really drives this point of being overcomers. 
So Romans 8, apologize, the wind just picked up, so hopefully this comes clear. But Romans 8, 35 through 37. I want to I want to leave you with this verse here. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. But Paul sums this up really well. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us conquerors that's what we are we are conquerors and we have the ability through our faith to overcome the world so think on that are you a conqueror can you overcome the world if you are a christian and you truly believe and you're a child of god yes you do have that ability so what is your next step what is it that you need to do starting right now is there something in your life that you've been keeping locked up bottled up inside you hiding it from god even though god knows it's there is there some control you need to let go let go of if there is there's no time like the present give your burdens to god Give your burdens to Jesus. Take on Jesus' yoke. We can overcome the world. We have the ability. God's given it to us. Second step. What can you do to share the light? As Christians, we have that that freedom knowing that whatever we face we can overcome because of our hope in Jesus Christ it may not look how we think it should look but we have that ability so what can you do to share your light with others how can we become disciples who make disciples because that is our calling and what better way to overcome the world what better way to basically stick it to Satan, if you want to get just blunt straight to the point, than by sharing your hope and faith that you know with others. So I challenge you with that. I know what connection we've talked about, one focus, and I'll hit that up right again. Who's your one focus that you're going to be praying for that you're going to be walking through life with? Let's be conquerors. Let's overcome the world. It's been great hanging out with you the last couple weeks. I look forward to what Brittany has to say and what Jimmy has to say to wrap up this series. Um, thank you for listening. God bless.